I love about the game of basketball is the idea that you're individually trying to accomplish something that is for everyone else around you. It's for your teammates. It's for your coaches. It's for the fans. The game of basketball requires you to think at a level that's so much bigger than you. I get great, you know, joy and satisfaction from the game. But by and large, greater satisfaction comes from the accomplishment of winning championships. NBA Unscripted, Los Angeles Lakers. On the count of three, one, two, three. On opening night, the Lakers had one more chance to bask in the glow of last season's success. It seems like it was yesterday. We were just at the victory parade. And here we are having to regenerate that momentum again. They had earned their championship rings at the expense of their nemesis, the Boston Celtics, in a grueling seven-game NBA Finals. The Los Angeles Lakers have captured their second straight world championship. You blink and the next season's beginning as it is now. It was time to get back to work and focus on their new mission, a three-peat. And as the season began, the Lakers raced out to a fast start. Blake for the lead. Got it. There's an order to what we do. We run, we flow, we organize. Lakers, for a reason, they're the two-time defending world champions. That's the challenge of being a champion. Push, push yourself. Each team that you play night in, night out, they want to take that from you, and you can't get tired. Dominating performance for Phil Jackson and his squad to start. We have a very deep team very well balanced and it's important for us to continue to move forward in the direction of winning the championship. Despite undergoing off-season knee surgery and sitting out much of training camp, Kobe Bryant continued to be the engine driving the Lakers. Best start ever by the Lakers in franchise history. We got off to a good start in our season. We played a number of games in which we were able to win. We were going pretty good down the road. It's over at Table Center. And the Lakers are 8 0. Way to do it. One, two, three. Right. How good is it to be Phil Jackson? When you look at this team, the way that they're playing, they don't have their starting center. Though the Lakers opened the season without the injured Andrew Bynum, Pau Gasol was filling the void, averaging 23 points and 12 rebounds over the first month. Back leads it off. Good decision for Pau Gasol of the dunk. I try to always understand where are our strengths against a certain opponent and try to uh, exploit them. As soon as they go into a blue, you go. And you got to come aggressively right to the elbow right now. There's Powell. First step, a very good one right by Milicic. Sets it up for Powell Gasol on the trail. So Powell Gasol, as good as it gets, 10 for 10. With Kobe and Powell leading the way, the Lakers kept on winning jumping out to a 13 and 2 start. These guys look awfully good. And if things keep going the way they are, maybe another world championship. Derek Fisher. Uh-huh. I know you're coming from Arkansas Little Rock. Population 12 and a half. <laughs> and now you live in uh, this big city right here in LA. We call this guy Rock over here. <laughs> this is Rock. Do not try to no dribble penetrate on him because he'll lock that forearm on you. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Little Rock. Little Rock. Little Rock. Kobe Bryant and Derek Fisher arrived together as Laker rookies in 1996, and they've been teammates for all five championship runs. While Kobe has been the superstar, Derek has indeed been a rock as the team's stabilizing force. Don't call it to come back. I've been here for years. Derek and I, uh, we've been through so many wars, been through so many battles. He's got a lot of heart. As a leader, you have to understand there are times when you step back and you allow things to happen and 
a lot of things to naturally take their course. And then there are other times when you need to step in and say some things. We Let's worked get it. 100 games to get Let's to this get point. It. Let's get it. Every practice, every drill we've been through to get this opportunity to win a championship. He can lead and still not lose focus of what the whole team has to do and what his role is. And he plays you to pass it to the post, and then you got to swing it. This season, the Lakers will lean on Fisher's guidance as they try to stay on track for another title. Fisher with the steal. Jack hustling to get back. Fisher flips it up and through. Crafty move. And now you know why they call him their little rock. As the Lakers paid a visit to Washington, D.C., they were growing accustomed to a ritual reserved for champions. For the second year in a row, they were honored by President Obama. I have to say that uh, there's a long-standing tradition of welcoming championship sports teams to the White House. Kobe and Derek uh, have been there so many times now they could lead tours themselves. Yeah, do you know this guy? Yeah. Same is true for Coach Jackson. I want to congratulate uh, Coach Phil Jackson on earning his 11th NBA championship ring. It was his fifth championship with the Lakers, which I should point out is still one behind the six he won with the Chicago Bulls. Kobe said not for long, though. That was Derek who said it, actually, but I felt, I felt the same way. He just beat me to the points. It would never get old. My plan is to be back in D.C. at some point around a year from now, hopefully celebrating another NBA championship. Sports are seen so widely on television now. It seems that every time you turn around, some team is winning a championship. And so it appears to come easy. When you do that the first time, and you realize how hard that is, uh, it becomes now near impossible to do that again. And so you're constantly questioning whether or not you can do that again until you finally do it. Through most of November, it appeared the Lakers were ready to impose their will this season. They won their first eight games, 13 of their first 15, and we all thought, wow, you know, you know, maybe they're still riding the adrenaline of that series win over the Celtics uh, last June. But soon, they weren't only battling opponents on the court. The Lakers also faced a daunting challenge from within. It's a word that has been used, which you know, I don't really like much, but complacency. It's hard for a team like us that has been so successful to stay on that edge the whole time. There's this boredom that, that's associated with getting through the regular season and getting to the games that really count. A little combination of games here that you may overlook is, you know, oh, we got a breather, we got this. No way. Players are starting to get presumptive about the opponents, that they don't respect them anymore, that they think they can take a day off or a game off or, or whatever. But Utah Jazz erase a 19-point deficit. They come back and beat the Lakers on this post-Thanksgiving night. When you are the Lakers, when the season schedule comes out, that game is automatically circled on everyone's calendar. Compared to on our calendar, coming off of a championship, there aren't many games that you're gonna circle and say, we're really looking forward to that particular game. Gonna be Lamar. Kobe from the sideline to tie it. Forget it. And the Indiana Pacers have defeated the Lakers for the first time ever at Staples Center. Well, I thought we played a lethargic game tonight. I was encouraging them from the first time out to play hard. I thought they out hustled us and obviously, you know, paid off for them in a win. Especially after giving up a 19 point lead in Utah. We should have came with the energy and effort in order to win this game, but we didn't come with it. So we deserve to lose. They beat us. Where are you guys mentally right now? It's a good question. As cracks in the champion's armor began to form, Ron Artest, the hero of Game 7 of the Finals, was out of sync in the Lakers' offense. Ron, that wasn't a good shot. Still not a good shot. You know, we did get better shots. Artest, double clutches, his three try for the win. No, and the Grizzlies have won it, 98 to 96. And after getting off to a strong start, Pau Gasol was now fighting fatigue. Our big injuries 
to Drew, who didn't recover quickly from the surgery. It was a little longer surgery than he anticipated, and the therapy behind it put a lot of pressure on Pout to play heavy minutes. And in that process, we started to get attacked. So you were talking before the game about the toll that the minutes are taken on Powell. Right. So this is basically, did we basically see it? Yeah, we really saw it tonight. As December began, a depleted Rockets team presented an opportunity for the Lakers to turn things around. But the swoon continued, and the champs were facing their first crisis of the season. Lakers have dropped four consecutive games. It's their longest losing streak since April 2007. While the Lakers were dealing with motivational issues, their rivals 3,000 miles to the east seemed hungrier than ever. Is it seven? Nine straight wins. It's inbound to Rondo. Five seconds to go. Celtics down one. Rondo lobs it. Garnett catches, lays it up and in with 1.4 to go. I think what we're seeing is a team in Boston that has their identity. They know who they are. They're comfortable with each other. Four seconds to go. Pierce right side. Ducks the shoulder. Step back on Stoudemire. Fall away. Got it! As the champs were struggling, it was hard not to notice that Boston was on a roll. With the entire sports world watching, the Celtics are the team to beat. Coming up, the Lakers try to recapture their championship form in a city where their every move is placed under the media microscope. It could be the smallest thing happens in practice and there's 10 of the biggest media outlets in the world talking about the next day like it's a huge story. means so much it represents in all honesty you know why I'm here on a team when you talk about character it basically comes down to taking who you are as an individual uh, the things that you may like to do your strengths and weaknesses and, and putting some of those things aside uh, to meet your teammates uh, at a place that's outside of your comfort zone. And so it, you know, manifests itself through helping mold and shape, you know, who, who men become. The fans are standing at Staples on it. Clippers lead by one. Barnes inbounds to Fisher in the center circle. Fisher dribbling left down the paint. A left-handed floater. He banks it in. And the Lakers will escape with a one-point win. As December wore on, the Lakers rediscovered the win column with the type of drama befitting a champion. What time is it? Yeah, time. Who? But too often, they found themselves working very hard during a relatively soft spot in their schedule. Men's games that we're not at our best, so we don't bring the focus and the intensity that is required. Nets in front, 83-82. Shot clock is down to six. Bryant for three. The Lakers will score themselves a hard-fought win here in New Jersey. You know, some games are meant to be run in the third quarter. You don't have to win them in the fourth. Just go out and play the right kind of ball right off the bat and start a half out. You'll be all right. We're messing around second half and letting people get back in the ball game on the road. Then you got to struggle at the end of the ball game. Can't allow that to happen. Are you guys pacing yourselves through these games? Not trying, Not trying to. Not trying to. Not trying to. It's. it's uh... You know, we just got to muster up the energy, muster up the motivation to go out and play, you know, night in and night out. And uh, not doing a very good job of that right now. Upon returning home, the Lakers hope to settle into a groove. But instead, their uneven play caught up with them. The Milwaukee Bucks, without their leading scorer, Brandon Jennings, come to Los Angeles and stunned the Lakers 98-79. That's really embarrassing, and the players you know, sufficiently were notified that that's not the way we play ball. On Christmas Day, the new look Miami Heat came to town. 
and the Lakers would need to regroup against an elite opponent. This game is a big deal. It's been on the minds of players on both teams. And it's a huge test for the Lakers, who, let's face it, haven't had the best start to a season. They've had the easiest schedule out of any of the big teams, and they haven't taken advantage of it. So tonight's their first big test. The Heat had lost only once all month and intended to make a statement that they were ready to challenge the Lakers' hold on the NBA title. They have a hell of a team, hell of a lineup. But it's not like, you know, they put the Miami Heat team together and it was like, oh, we got to get motivated to win a championship. We've been there. That confidence didn't mean much to Miami's big three. The Heat were the second straight team to come into Staples and set the champions back on their heels. Way down the right of the paint. Wrap around bounce for Bosch. Extending, hammers it down, and one. Dwayne Wade, right wing, catches the bounce, dribbles down to the block, sidesteps the defense, and finger rolls it in. And it's a 16-point lead. And some anxiety here at the Staples Center. The game had so much hype behind it, and we didn't come out and meet the energy that, that the game presented. It's not about wins and losses. It's about how we're going to play together. Just running up the floor, dribbles it off of his foot and into the Miami bench. We're playing bad basketball. We got blown out by the Bucks before that. To win a championship, you have to play a certain style of basketball. And we weren't playing that way on Christmas. And it's over at Staples Center. For the Lakers, a second consecutive blowout loss. Any lessons from the repeat that you can use now to help you now? I mean, I'm going to kick some in practice. Losing record against winning teams. Does that concern you at all at this stage? <laughs> what about this press conference makes you think I'm not concerned? <laughs> With the Lakers searching for answers, they'd have to face the top team in the West, the San Antonio Spurs, another proven champion standing in their way. The Spurs handed LA another demoralizing loss, and Kobe Bryant had seen enough. He's just so competitive and so talented that the minute he, he sees us struggle a little bit, that competitive edge just takes over. And in their first game of the new year, Kobe resolved to take matters into his own hands against Memphis. And when he gets hot, it works for us sometimes. You know, other times it, it backfires. The Lakers lose by 19 to the Memphis Grizzlies. We get behind early in the third quarter on some stupid plays, and then, you know, Kobe has to screw up the, you know, game and start, you know, you know, energizing the team by going one-on-one. -on -one. It takes the rest of the guys out, and as a consequence, that didn't bring us back. Wow, a very frustrated Phil mm -hmm. Jackson. And this is the second time in a very short period of time you had Kobe calling out the teammates, Phil Jackson calling out the team. Now you got Phil Jackson calling out Kobe again. I mean, they got to get their act together. The Lakers would also have to face up to their rabid fans who bring high expectations along with all the attention they lavish on the team. Like right before I got traded, I had a just signed on my Twitter page and I had like 90, 90 followers and then right after the trade it went up to almost 5,000. Lakers! Lakers! Yeah, baby. I mean, it's part of what makes it so great playing for the Lakers is all the attention and the love and the, the support you get, but it, it also makes it crazy sometimes. It's funny, there's a huge misconception about the sports fan in L.A. <laughs> I think LA is this laid back place. You know, sports fans are very blase about their teams. You know, it's as cutthroat and the expectation level is just as high as a city like New York. It really is. Come on, come on. We could win 10 games in a row blowing teams out by 20 points and, and we could have one game where we really stink it up. And if we do that, we'll hear it from the crowd. They'll boo us uh, on our home court. And they have done it, you know, several times already this season. They've been very spoiled over the years. This is a team that's a perennial championship contender, and it doesn't matter that they've won two straight. It doesn't matter that they've been to three straight NBA Finals. They want to know, what has this team done for me this week? And if they lose two games in a row, you know, the sky is falling again in LA. You know, what's wrong with the Lakers? Coming up, the Lakers begin to recapture their championship form while starting to look ahead to their much-anticipated January 30th clash with the Celtics. 
we've been having some pretty intense and competitive practices, and he just can't help but translate to the court. As 2011 began, the city of Los Angeles saw their Lakers fighting through another slump. But hope returned, along with their starting center, Andrew Bynum. Well, I think we're, we're all happy to have Andrew back. I, I think that's the biggest plus. Can't teach size. <laughs> you know, and him, him and Powell together play, they can play beautiful together. It's refreshing to have an, having Andrew back with us. Uh, obviously, big presence for us in the paint. Um, guy that can score down low, can intimidate and block shots, can rebound. So we're excited to have him back on board. How you feeling today? Also making his return to practice, Kobe Bryant, who had been resting his surgically repaired knee on off days. And immediately, the intensity picked up. Having him on the floor with us in practice uh, makes a huge difference. You know, he doesn't have an in-between gear. So when he's out there on the floor with everybody, you know, he's going to say things and do things that just kind of gets everybody's edge up. Yeah, we had a very hard practice session. I mean, we, we ran a lot, we worked on a lot of stuff. Um, you know, and it, and it carries over. I mean, we've been having some pretty intense and competitive practices, and it just can't help but translate to the court. The Lakers did respond as Kobe imposed his will and also continued his climb up the career scoring chart. With that basket, Kobe has just moved ahead of Dominique Wilkins. At 32 years of age, you're starting to see him now right at that, that apex of his career. Surpassed the totals of Oscar Robertson. Think about sport of basketball and how many players play basketball and how many have been in the NBA and then to be considered one of the elite. Kobe takes it away and sprints away from Dante Green and right past Akeem Olajuwon. Number eight now on the all time scoring list. I feel very fortunate to be in that, that kind of breath. But Bryant's performances came at a price. As he drove his team, he was punishing his body. Between his fingers and his hand and his knees, there's a lot going on there. He's pushing himself very hard. Uh, he's admitted just how in poor disrepair his right knee is, almost bone on bone. Yet he's playing 35 plus minutes per game and, and trying to will this team in early January when you know the light at the end of the tunnel isn't that close yet. The team mirrored the toughness of its leader and the Lakers started to look like champs again. Ryan puts his head down, kicks it out, hard chest, nobody near him, and knocks down the three. Big shot from Ron Artes as the Lakers win back-to-back -back nights. I mean, we're happy with the win, but I really can't judge it right now. I just know we gotta continue to play hard. physical tonight, we're aggressive. And I think that's something that, you know, keyed a little bit of our turnaround as a, as a team here in the last couple weeks. And easy take away, Derek Fisher. He's got on the trail, Kobe and our test. What pass? Set for the NBA's defending champs, three straight wins. We're starting that clip as far as health, um, as far as everyone's game, you know, coming together at the right time. For all the drama that surrounds the Lakers, Lamar Odom brings a steadiness and versatility that the team has come to depend on. You know, you're really talking about a guy who I think makes this team the, the perennial championship contender that it is. Lamar Odom is off to a sensational start this year. He's been the most consistent Laker throughout the year. He shoots 60% from the field. He plays four different positions. If you ask Phil Jackson or Kobe Bryant, they'll tell you Lamar Odom should be on the All-Star team. Lamar is the player that a lot of people don't understand. They look at the TV and they see this guy who's angular, tall player, but nothing stands out. When you're down the court level and you see this guy who's 6'10", handling the ball, driving by guys, guards and big men. The drive, the slip show! Lamar Odom! And you realize that the other team has to put somebody out there on the floor to try and deal with it. Odom goes behind the back! Are you kidding me?
whether it's five points and, and 10 rebounds or you know 25 points and, and 15 rebounds, everything counts. Lamar's got 17 boards in 26 minutes. But talent aside, it's his team first attitude that makes Odom such a perfect fit. His temperament and the fact that he's been able to sacrifice so much of his own statistics for the betterment of the team, I don't think is talked about enough. You know, case in point this year, Lamar had to start the season for Andrew Bynum, and then he goes right back to the bench, doesn't say a word about it. And that's why Lamar is so beloved in that locker room. Everybody loves Lamar. <laughs> just because of that, he's not a selfish player. He, he just plays hard. He just does the things that we need in order to win. And it's a 22 point. Very convincing win for the Lakers tonight over the Knicks. This is your fourth straight win now. Are you guys back in that rhythm, back playing together again? Well, we're getting there. There's some things that we tweak defensively, which we're improving on and doing a much better job as a player. Williams left wing bobbles across. The Lakers continue to roll through the January schedule as they clamp down on the competition. 72-27 with 7-17 left in the quarter. When we're able to really lock in and defend team, um, we get more opportunities at the offensive end, and it just makes it hard for us to lose. Gasol takes it away, though. You want it? No. Nope. Andrew will take it. Cup gets the assist. We all witnessed the new Laker regular season record with an incredibly impressive defensive performance. The Lakers hold the Cleveland Cavaliers to 57 points. Good intensity out there defensively, guys. Let's Get ready for tomorrow night's game itself, ready get to the airplane. Let's get out there and get another one to go. Let's keep going. Way to do it. One, two, three. Their win streak would grow to seven. The team was playing with a sense of purpose that its coach had been waiting for. We're starting to play better. I'm starting to see the attentiveness that I like to see in a team. Right with the spin, dumps it off to the saw. Beautifully done. Over the last week or two, we've made huge strides, and we are a lot better team right now than we were two weeks ago. With their showdown against the Celtics coming up on the calendar, the Lakers were peaking at the right time. But in Boston, the season was taking its toll. You need a blow? Huh? You need Nate right here? Rondo, you need Nate right here? Despite a rash of injuries, the Celtics were still piling up wins. But there was one player they could not afford to lose. Green gets it back from Ray Allen for the jam. And he comes up just a little bit gimpy. He's hurt. He's the one most important piece to this puzzle. And we know we're a great team, but we can't win a championship without Kevin Garnett. Right now, I'm in game-to-game -game mode for our team. We don't know who's going to play right now, each game. The Wizards have registered the biggest upset of the night, maybe of the season, knocking off the Celtics. But no one's going to feel sorry for us. Everyone wants to beat you, and when they beat you, they're going to celebrate like you were healthy. Coming up, can the Lakers keep winning as the competition grows stronger? Come on, you bigs. Get right in, Blue. And their legendary coach guides them at every step in a season that will be his last stand. You want to send him out, you know, being the greatest coach ever, you want to send him out with a championship. The basketball doesn't define me. Basketball has been great to me. For me, knowing when it's time to you know, step away from the game of basketball, the moment that this starts to feel like work, like a job that I don't enjoy, that's when it'll be time. In mid-January, the Lakers hit the road feeling upbeat. With their recent winning streak, they were regaining their stride. But the regular season was barely half over. That was a trip. <laughs> Long. 
you look at your schedule sometimes and you can't believe how many games. There's an 82 game season and you have to pay the price. You have to play all 82. No stranger to long seasons, Phil Jackson is in his 20th year as a head coach and has said this will be his final campaign. There's been certain cities that we've gone to, you know, that we're done and we don't have to visit there anymore, that he said, this is my last time coming to this city. You know, Phil is somewhat motivated to, you know, try and enjoy every moment uh, this particular season uh, with the possibly being the last that he, that he coaches NBA basketball. We welcome you to the American Airlines Center, a sellout crowd, Kobe Bryant and the Lakers' first visit to Dallas this season. Despite all of their ups and downs, the champs can always draw on the support of Laker Nation, even when they're on the road. I mean, they love watching us come play, man. You look around now, and we're here early. And, uh, you know, you see Laker jerseys. Let's <laughs> go! <laughs> come on now. Hey, go, we got y'all. So so we're so show. glad to have you in Dallas. Do you know that? This night would bring another chance to test themselves against a quality team, the Dallas Mavericks. I think tonight is a meaningful game, actually for both of us. We want to let them know that uh, to win the West, you have to come to us. And early on, the Lakers looked well on their way to making a statement, building a 10-point lead in the second quarter. But in the second half, the Lakers' momentum suddenly vanished, and so did their lead as Dallas came roaring back. Marion to the basket. Beautiful ball from Sean Marion and an exclamation point on what will be a Dallas Maverick victory here tonight. After another disappointing performance against an elite opponent, Phil Jackson was left to confront more tough questions. It wasn't, you know, unbelievable turnovers. We had seven in that quarter. In the midst of his final season, Jackson, more than ever, has been able to find lighthearted moments even in defeat. He's, he's calling it his last stand, you know, so I think he's getting his money's worth. He's gonna leave the game, he might as well leave it with his opinions <laughs> about just about everything. You know what I'll miss is walking, you know, 250 yards from the bus to get to the locker room, that's one thing I'll miss. <laughs> None of this is really mean-spirited by Phil. It, it's almost, it has a bemusement to the whole process. I sometimes put my foot in my mouth and say things that, you know, I wish I could take back at times. A lot of times, it's the jocularity between the press and the coach that sometimes, you know, you say things off the cuff that sometimes cost you. <laughs> I'm not going to go any farther than that. Either. The OR meetings take place uh, daily on a breakfast schedule basis. Uh, so last night, we got in at uh, 2 o'clock. So this is a 10 o'clock breakfast we have. Scored on three of 16 attempts on, on second chance points. Lost him for that wasn't lost enough. A little bit. You know, it's a pretty good one tonight. Boston and Orlando. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that. They like played Atlanta. Yeah. They they played Atlanta. There's a lot of stuff we have to think about. Uh, you know, what you do against that Boston defense. I rarely give a motivational speech before a ball game. We talk about things, perhaps, that are encouragements and reminders. Watch the tempo of the game. You never want to stay within the tempo. Against the Nuggets, the Lakers did stay in control, led by a rejuvenated Pau Gasol. Extends with a left and puts it in. What a play by Gasol. It was a much needed win over a Western Conference contender. But for a team in search of consistency, this was no time to be satisfied. I'd like to say it's as easy as just staying focused and continuing to grow, but for some reason we keep falling back after having a little success. Back home in Los Angeles, the Lakers prepared for their next challenge. But for Phil Jackson, who has navigated more championship journeys than any coach in NBA history, each game is just one more step in the long march toward their ultimate goal. My basic thing is how to prepare a team so that they can go into the playoffs in the best possible condition and mentally the best frame of mind that they can be. You don't get them in a routine that 
becomes boring, I think, as a coach. And so things are just done differently or changed up or you have a variety or spice. Catch the ball, put it up against the backboard, let them down and do it. Something along the way that keeps them in tune and interested in what's going on. I think it's been genius how he's approached the season. Make sure that you're not clogging the lane. All right, you're clearing the lane. He doesn't want to put too much pressure on his players and have them, you know, so uh, geared up thinking about a three-peat that they peak too early. There's so much that has to happen for a season to go right, and there has to be enough attention in it to get your team to a place where they're building energy when they enter into the playoffs. Ooh, stay down. His voice and his tone, I guarantee you, will change. Come on, you bigs. Get running, Blue. The players will know that he's serious and that it's time to really focus at the task at hand. And the task for this season is to win the title that would give Jackson the fourth three-peat of his storied career. I think when it does get down closer to what counts, you know, playoffs, these players will, will look at it and say, this, this is going to be our last opportunity to play for this man. Obviously, if this is his last go, you want to send him out, you know, being the greatest coach ever, you want to send him out with the championship. Meanwhile, back east, the Celtics had gone six and three in Kevin Garnett's absence. He rejoined the team in mid-January and helped them beat one of their fiercest rivals. Oh, down, Kevin Garnett. Garnett doing everything, playing offense and defense tonight in his return after missing the nine games for Boston. And with center Kendrick Perkins back from a knee injury suffered in last year's finals against the Lakers, Boston was now at full strength. Underneath the Perk and a chance for a three-point play. Welcome back, Perk! With their team intact, the Celtics were anticipating their January 30th showdown in Los Angeles. We know where we are now. We want to be better when that time comes. Coming up, the long-awaited matchup finally arrives. The Lakers meet the Celtics in their finals rematch, and the NBA's greatest rivalry is renewed. This is what we live for. This is what the game of basketball is all about, Celtics-Lakers. This is the game that brought everybody to the table. And believe it or not, all these years later, it's still happening. Every single night, you know, we're, we're graded, we're measured, you know, we're watched very closely. To, to see how we stack up against, you know, this team, the Celtics. So you're forced at all times, you're consistently looking in the mirror and asking yourself, am I good enough? Am I doing everything that I can do uh, to get the best out of myself? But, you know, more importantly, Am I doing everything that I can do to, to help my team be the best that it can be? Finally, the day had arrived. The Celtics were in town, and the Lakers would face their stiffest test against their longtime rival. I try to look at every game as a measuring stick. Every game there's a test to pass. Obviously, there's games that you're more excited about or you look forward to a little more than others, and Boston is one of them. This is what we live for. This is what the game of basketball is all about, Celtics-Lakers. This is the game that brought everybody to the table, and it, believe it or not, all these years later, it's still happening. It's 1984, and we're going back. It's been a long time, it's time. When these two teams start to play each other, it's tradition. West Coast, East Coast, people take sides. There's no in-between. Ali was always ready for Frazier, and you guys are Frazier. We are Ali. Remember that. And you know what? What? Ali got to be and who, won, <laughs> yep, and who won the other two times? Like who won the series? You know who won the series? Buddy, be ready. Who won the series? Be Answer the question. ready. It was the Lakers' first meeting with the Celtics since defeating them for the championship in Game 7 of last year's finals. Obviously, having won the championship in the way we did with 
they're thinking that they kind of gave it to us. It's going to be an amazing game because we're going to try to prove that they didn't give us anything. We earned it, and they're going to be trying to prove the option. Showtime! 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 Well, the Celtics are playing the best overall basketball in the league. They continue to play a high-performance game. And the Lakers? The Lakers need to play with that high level of intensity for 48 minutes, and they haven't done it this season. Come on, guys, let's get it going. One, two, three. Kobe Bryant would do all he could to send the Celtics home tasting defeat once again. Kobe has it right corner, pull up three. It's good. Right over Garnett. Bynum hands off to Bryant. Kobe curling around to find some space diagonally down to the block. Extends up for the floater and hits it again. Kobe confounding this Boston defense. Kobe attacks right baseline into the paint. Fakes up and hits the left-hander point blank. Kobe showing the repertoire. He's got 37 now. Though Kobe finished with 41 points, he wasn't getting much support from his teammates. To make matters worse, the Celtics couldn't miss. Rondo out of the pack, long lead, Ray Allen rocks the three, got it! Woo -hoo -hoo. Get a stop out there! It's a consecutive stop. Down the stretch, the Celtics' trademark teamwork would make the difference. Celtics pushing four on three. Rondo lobs right side to Garnett, he alley-oops it home. And you slowly start to feel the air being sucked from the building. Boston Celtics, a hungrier team, and today we're clearly the superior team as they come to Staples seven months after their gut-wrenching defeat. They hammer the Lakers by the final score of 109 to 96. And once again, the Lakers were left with the same questions they had faced all season. I'm a bit concerned that you guys haven't beat one of the so-called power teams yet. Is it the playoffs yet? No. Okay. It's not the playoffs yet. We're still playing regular season games. We'll get there in time. And these games are measuring sticks for us. Uh, we didn't measure up extremely well today. Get your mic uh, doesn't mean we won't be there Thank you. Is there a time, Lamar, where you guys actually hit the panic button? No. 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 So you can't. So you guys you can't, play Boston? You can't allow yourself to, you know, to, to hit the pan of body. To the Lakers, regular season losses are simply part of the process. You know, if you come out and just win all your games, everything's always good. You don't really fix the problems. You know, losing sometimes is the best thing for our team because we can be overconfident. Duncan on this for the win. And the Lakers lose it at the buzzer. But even for a champion, at what point does urgency set in? This is a team now that's tired. They're, they're fatigued mentally. We've seen that, you know, for, for long stretches this year. A lot of times a team won't really respond until they feel that pressure of, you know, we have to win now. And that's when you see them play their best basketball. I do think we're capable of maximizing what it is we have and what it is we have left. And the question will always be, is that enough? Finger rolls it in. And it's a 16-point lead. And some anxiety here at the Staples Center. The game had so much hype behind it, and we didn't come out and meet the energy that, that the game presented. It's not about wins and losses. Chest running up the floor, dribbles it off of his foot and into the Miami bench. We're playing bad basketball. We got blown out by the Bucks before that. To win a championship, you have to play a certain style of basketball. And we weren't playing that way on Christmas. And it's over at Staples Center. For the Lakers, a second consecutive blowout loss. Any lessons from the repeat that you can use now to help you now? Yeah, I'm going to kick some in practice. Losing record against winning teams. Does that concern you at all at this stage? What about this press conference makes you think I'm not concerned? <laughs> 
With the Lakers searching for answers, they'd have to face the top team in the West, the San Antonio Spurs, another proven champion standing in their way. Parker with a steal and lays it! Oh, mama! The Spurs handed LA another demoralizing loss, and Kobe Bryant had seen enough. He's just so competitive and so talented that the minute he, he sees us struggle a little bit, that competitive edge just takes over. And in their first game of the new year, Kobe resolved to take matters into his own hands against Memphis. And when he gets hot, it works for us sometimes. You know, other times it, it backfires. The Lakers lose by 19 to the Memphis Grizzlies. We get behind early in the third quarter on some stupid plays, and then you know Kobe has to screw up the you know game and start you know you know energizing the team by going one on one. That takes the rest of the guys out, and as a consequence, that didn't bring us back. Wow, a very frustrated Phil mm -hmm. Jackson. And this is the second time in a very short period of time you had Kobe calling out the teammates, Phil Jackson calling out the team. Now you got Phil Jackson calling out Kobe again. I mean, they got to get their act together. The Lakers would also have to face up to their rabid fans, who bring high expectations along with all the attention they lavish on the team. Like right before I got traded, I had a just signed on my Twitter page, and I had like 90, 90 followers, and then right after the trade, it went up to almost 5,000. Lakers! Lakers! Yeah, baby. I mean, it's part of what makes it so great playing for the Lakers is all the attention and the love and the, the support you get. But it, uh, it also makes it crazy sometimes. It's funny, there's a huge misconception about the sports fan in L.A. Oh, they think L.A. is this laid-back place. You know, sports fans are very blasé about their teams. You know, it's as cutthroat, and the expectation level is just as high as a city like New York. It really is. Oh, come on. We could win 10 games in a row blowing teams out by 20 points, and, and we could have one game where we really stink it up, and. If we do that, we'll hear it from the crowd. They'll boo us uh, on our home court. And they have done it you know, several times already this season. They've been very spoiled over the years. This is a team that's a perennial championship contender, and it doesn't matter that they've won two straight. It doesn't matter that they've been to three straight NBA Finals. They want to know, what has this team done for me this week? And if they lose two games in a row, you know, the sky is falling again in LA. You know, what's wrong with the Lakers? Coming up the Lakers begin to recapture their championship form while starting to look ahead to their much anticipated January 30th clash with the Celtics. We've been having some pretty intense and competitive practices and they just can't help but translate to the court. Maybe another world championship. Derek Fisher. Uh-huh. I know you're coming from Arkansas Little Rock. Population 12. <laughs> and a half. And now you live in uh, this big city right here, L.A. We call this guy Rock over here. <laughs> this is Rock. Do not try to dribble penetrate on him, because he'll lock that forearm on you. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Little Rock. Little Rock. Little Rock. Kobe Bryant and Derek Fisher arrived together as Laker rookies in 1996. And they've been teammates for all five championship runs. While Kobe has been the superstar, Derek has indeed been a rock as the team's stabilizing force. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. <laughs> Derek and I, uh, we've been through so many wars, been through so many battles. He's got a lot of heart. As a leader, you have to understand there are times when you step back and you allow things to happen and allow things to naturally take their course. And then there are other times when you need to step in and say some things. We worked 100 games to get Let's to this point. Let's get it. Every practice, every drill we've been through to get this opportunity to win a championship. He can lead and still not lose focus of what the whole team has to do and what his role is. And he plays you to pass it to the post, and then you got to swing it. This season, the Lakers will lean on Fisher's guidance as they try to stay on track for another title. Fisher with the steal. Jack hustling to get back. Fisher flips it up and through. Crafty move. And now you know why they call him their little rock. As the Lakers paid a visit to Washington, D.C., they were growing accustomed to a ritual reserved for champions. For the second year in a row, they were honored by President Obama. 
I have to say that uh, there's a long-standing tradition of welcoming championship sports teams to the White House. Kobe and Derek uh, have been there so many times now they could lead tours themselves. Yeah, you know this guy? Uh, same is true for Coach Jackson. I want to congratulate uh, Coach Phil Jackson on earning his 11th NBA championship ring. Uh, it was his fifth championship with the Lakers, which I should point out is still one behind the six he won with the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> Kobe said not for long, though. That was Derek who said it, actually, but I felt, I felt the same way. He just beat me to the points. It would never get old. My plan is to be back in D.C. at some point around a year from now, hopefully celebrating another NBA championship. Sports are seen so widely on television now. It seems that every time you turn around, some team is winning a championship. And so it appears to come easy. When you do that the first time, and you realize how hard that is, uh, it becomes now near impossible to do that again. And so you're constantly questioning whether or not you can do that again until you finally do it. Through most of November, it appeared the Lakers were ready to impose their will this season. They won their first eight games, 13 of their first 15, and we all thought, wow, you know, you know, maybe they're still riding the adrenaline of that series win over the Celtics uh, last June. But soon, they weren't only battling opponents on the court. The Lakers also faced a daunting challenge from within. It's a word that has been used which you know, I don't really like much, but complacency. It's hard for a team like us. What I love about the game of basketball is the idea that you're individually trying to accomplish something that is for everyone else around you. It's for your teammates. It's for your coaches. It's for the fans. The game of basketball requires you to think at a level that's so much bigger than you. I get great you know, joy and satisfaction from the game, but by and large, greater satisfaction comes from the accomplishment of winning championships. NBA Unscripted, Los Angeles Lakers. On the count of three, one, two, three. On opening night, the Lakers had one more chance to bask in the glow of last season's success. It seems like it was yesterday, we were just at the victory parade. Here we are having to regenerate that momentum again. They had earned their championship rings at the expense of their nemesis, the Boston Celtics, in a grueling seven-game NBA Finals. The Los Angeles Lakers have captured their second straight world championship. You blink and the next season's beginning as it is now. It was time to get back to work and focus on their new mission, a three-peat. And as the season began, the Lakers raced out to a fast start. Play for the lead. There's an order to what we do. We run, we flow, we organize. Lakers, for a reason, they're the two-time defending world champions. That's the challenge of being a champion. Push, push yourself. Each team that you play night in, night out, they want to take that from you, and you can't get tired. Dominating performance for Phil Jackson and his squad to start. We have a very deep team very well balanced and it's important for us to continue to move forward in the direction of winning the championship. Despite undergoing off-season knee surgery and sitting out much of training camp, Kobe Bryant continued to be the engine driving the Lakers. Best start ever by the Lakers in franchise history. We got off to a good start in our season. We played a number of games in which we were able to win. 
we're going pretty good down the road. It's over at Staples Center, and the Lakers are 8-0. No. Way to do it. One, two, three. Ready. How good is it to be Phil Jackson? When you look at this team, the way that they're playing, they don't have their starting center. Though the Lakers opened the season without the injured Andrew Bynum, Paul Gasol was filling the void, averaging 23 points and 12 rebounds over the first month. That leads it off. Good decision for Paul Gasol of the dunk. I try to always understand where are our strengths against a certain opponent and try to uh, exploit them. As soon as they go into a blue, you go. And you got to come aggressively right to the elbow right now. There's Powell. First step, a very good one right by Milicic. Sets it up to Powell Gasol on the trail. So Powell Gasol, as good as it gets, 10 for 10. With Kobe and Powell leading the way, the Lakers kept on winning, jumping out to a 13 and 2 start. These guys look awfully good. And if things keep going the way they are. Ten of the biggest media outlets in the world talking about the next day like it's a huge story. Character means so much. It represents, in all honesty, you know, why I'm here. On a team, when you talk about character, it basically comes down to taking who you are as an individual, uh, the things that you may like to do, your strengths and weaknesses, and, and putting some of those things aside uh, to meet your teammates uh, at a place that's outside of your comfort zone. And so it, you know, it manifests itself through helping mold and shape, you know, who, who men become. Clippers lead by one. Barnes inbounds to Fisher in the center circle. Fisher dribbling left down the paint. A left-handed floater. A big it in. And the Lakers will escape with a one-point win. As December wore on, the Lakers rediscovered the win column with a type of drama befitting a champion. What time is it? It's a hoop. But too often, they found themselves working very hard during a relatively soft spot in their schedule. Men's games that we're not at our best, so we don't bring the focus and the intensity that is required. Nets in front, 83-82. Shot clock is down to six. Bryant for three. The Lakers will score themselves a hard fought win here in New Jersey. So some games are meant to be run in the third quarter. You don't have to win them in the fourth. Just go out and play the right kind of ball right off the bat and start a half out. You'd be all right. We're messing around second half and letting people get back in the ball game on the road. Then you got to struggle at the end of the ball game. Can't allow that to happen. Are you guys pacing yourselves through these games? Not trying, not trying to. Not trying to. Not trying to. It's, it's uh, you know, we just got to muster up the energy, muster up the motivation to go out and play. You know, night in and night out. And, uh, not doing a very good job of that right now. Upon returning home, the Lakers hope to settle into a groove, but instead. Their uneven play caught up with them. The Milwaukee Bucks, without their leading scorer, Brandon Jennings, come to Los Angeles and stunned the Lakers 98 79. That's really embarrassing. And the players, you know, sufficiently were notified that that's not the way we play ball. On Christmas Day, the new look Miami Heat came to town, and the Lakers would need to regroup against an elite opponent. This game is a big deal. It's been on the minds of players on both teams. And it's a huge test for the Lakers, who, let's face it, haven't had the best start to a season. And they've had the easiest schedule out of any of the big teams, and they haven't taken advantage of it. So tonight's their first big test. The Heat had lost only once all month and intended to make a statement that they were ready to challenge the Lakers' hold on the NBA title. They have a hell of a team, hell of a lineup. It's not like, you know, they put the Miami Heat team together and it was like, oh, we got to get motivated to win a championship. We've been there. That confidence didn't mean much to Miami's big three. The Heat were the second straight team to come into Staples and set the champions back on their heels. 
Way down the right of the paint. Wrap around bounce for Bosch. Extending, hammers it down. And one. Dwayne Wade, right wing, catches the bounce, dribbles down to the block, sidesteps the defense. And it's been so successful to stay on that edge the whole time. There's this boredom that, that's associated with getting through the regular season and getting to the games that really count. A little combination of games here that you may overlook is, you know, oh, oh, we got a breather, we got this. No way. Players start to get presumptive about the opponents, that they don't respect them anymore, that they think they can take a day off or a game off or, or whatever. But Utah Jazz erase a 19-point deficit. They come back and beat the Lakers on this post-Thanksgiving night. When you are the Lakers, when the season schedule comes out, that game is automatically circled on everyone's calendar. Compared to on our calendar, coming off of a championship, there aren't many games that you're going to circle and say, we're really looking forward to that particular game. Going to be Lamar. Kobe from the sideline to tie it. And the Indiana Pacers have defeated the Lakers for the first time ever at Staples Center. Well, I thought we played a lethargic game tonight. I was encouraging them from the first time out to play hard. I thought they out hustled us and obviously, you know, paid off for them in a win. Especially after giving up a 19 point lead in Utah. Should have came with the energy and effort in order to win this game, but we didn't come with it, so we deserve to lose. They beat us. Where are you guys mentally right now? It's a good question. As cracks in the champion's armor began to form, Ron Artest, the hero of Game 7 of the Finals, was out of sync in the Lakers' offense. Ron, that wasn't a good shot. Still not a good okay. shot. Okay. Well, we did get better shots. Artest, double clutches, his three try for the win. No! And the Grizzlies have won it! 98 to 96! And after getting off to a strong start, Pau Gasol was now fighting fatigue. Our big injuries to Drew, who didn't recover quickly from the surgery, is a little longer surgery than he anticipated, and the therapy behind it put a lot of pressure on Pout to play heavy minutes. And in that process, we started to get attacked. So you were talking before the game about the toll that the minutes are taking on Pout. Right. So this is basically, did we basically see it? Yeah, we really saw it tonight. As December began, a depleted Rockets team presented an opportunity for the Lakers to turn things around. But the swoon continued, and the champs were facing their first crisis of the season. Lakers have dropped four consecutive games. It's their longest losing streak since April 2007. While the Lakers were dealing with motivational issues, their rivals 3,000 miles to the east seemed hungrier than ever. And the winning streak is at seven. Nine straight wins. It's inbound to Rondo. Five seconds to go. Celtics down one. Rondo lobs it. Garnett catches, lays it up and in with 1.4 to go. I think what we're seeing is a team in Boston that has their identity. They know who they are. They're comfortable with each other. Four seconds to go. Pierce right side. Ducks the shoulder. Step back on Stoudemire. Fall away. Got it! As the champs were struggling, it was hard not to notice that Boston was on a roll. With the entire sports world watching, the Celtics are the team to beat. Coming up, the Lakers try to recapture their championship form in a city where their every move is placed under the media microscope. It could be the smallest thing happens in practice and they're 